Uh, thanks for watching. I'm going to do a little discussion here on using the strategies we use here in the States in Ireland and specifically for investing in cryptographic currency. So let me start by saying that for most people, buying cryptographic currency uh, is not an investment. It's purely speculation. I know why you're buying it because you're looking at the price going up against the unit of currency, the dollar mostly, or whatever your local currency is. Okay, fine. It's kind of like buying gold. But at the same time that may happen, it may not. And at the same time that may happen, you're also dealing with the depreciation of the unit of currency that you're trying to get ahead of. So you're not really investing. That is not an investment. Investment is when you buy something that produces cash flow or a profit. That's an investment. That might be a business. It might be a joint venture. It might be a single transaction. Okay. It might also be a professional service. It might be a professional service that you own. You might be a plumber and you may own the plumbing organization meaning that you do the marketing and placement for the plumbers. So those are investments, okay? And typically an investment is not like, for example, a sandwich shop that you own where you also work and make sandwiches. I mean, it could be, or if you don't have to, then yeah, maybe it's an investment. If you don't have to work there, but you do because you like it, then yeah, maybe it's an investment, okay? So you get the idea. An investment is something that's going to produce profit. Okay, and on a regular basis, it could be a single transaction, but buying cryptos typically is not an investment for most people. Okay, staking may be somewhat an investment. Okay, so let me just get into these questions here. Someone was kind enough to write them out, and so I felt like it would be useful to just go over them. All right, so he's asking me to research the law in Ireland. I don't research the law in the States. I was born here. I live here. I don't care what the statutes say. I just know that the law is very ubiquitous. So what does that mean? If I own some property, let's say I own a gold coin. What's the law governing the gold coin? Well, first of all, it's in my hand, right? That's the law governing the gold coin. It's in my hand. If you're talking about taxes, then the gold coin is not a thing that's considered in our tax laws, except to say this, if I dispose of property for dollars, there may be a tax on it. It may be reportable. So the currency in which I'm dealing with, right? Not gold, but the currency that I might accept in exchange for the gold may be taxable. Is that true in every country? Mostly. Is that true in Ireland? Probably. England, Scotland, Australia, New Zealand, all the modern English speaking countries for certain, right? Most modern countries in Europe, Asia have a similar system. So you might want to research Irish tax law or Irish law or something. I don't know, but the law of property is very clear and old and it predates all our statutes. All right. So I really don't care. And it doesn't really factor into our discussion. And as you'll see, I'm going to emphasize this concept more. Because I'm going to talk about private property, as I always do. So here, let's go over the question. So this person's asking, if he owns crypto personally, are there any ways he can protect, protect himself so that he doesn't have to pay taxes? It's like I just said, acquiring the ownership of something in any way is in itself not taxable. It may be taxable to the person or entity that you acquired it from, possibly, but not the person who acquired it. Acquiring something is typically not taxable, okay? Not, it's not income, right? Spending money is the definition of not income or your income, it's somebody else's income maybe, right? All right, so yeah, buy the cryptos or property, cryptos or property, check the one thing that you can check in your local jurisdiction is to see how cryptos are defined by a regula regulating agency, such as your tax agency. Are, are cryptos defined as property? Now, sometimes they're defined as property and securities. And I think sometimes they might be defined as currency. For example, if your government has accepted the crypto coin, the virtual currency for the payment of a tax or defined it as legal tender. Okay, if that's the case, then the crypto co coin right there is just like your currency, the same rules apply. It's no longer within the scope of this discussion, what I'm talking about where cryptos are not taxable, okay? 
the currency is taxable. If your government defines the cryptos as legal tender, the same as currency, and I'm not talking about a stable coin. I'm talking about your government accepting the crypto coin as legal tender. That becomes taxable, just like the local currency, okay? Just like El Salvador did. So um, if you convert to fiat, if you sell, if you sell for dollars or the, your local currency, your local currency is more likely taxable and it's going to be considered some kind of income. Here's how you avoid that. Here's how you avoid that in any jurisdiction. So let's say I own some uh, cryptographic currency. Let's say I own some Bitcoin. Let's say I own $100,000 worth of Bitcoin. And then I, I convey it to a wallet in which I have the credentials and let's say my brother has the credentials. So we together are kind of like a partnership. We don't have a formal partnership agreement. We don't have a charter or registry with the state, but we're a partnership. So what, that, what does that mean? That means the property rights are shared between the two of us. It's not his property and it's not mine, it's ours. And if we wanna do something with it, we have to decide uh, at the time we're gonna do something, right? Well, what if I have a particular liability that's not associated with him or the coins? The coins are unencumbered by the way, no liens or anything like that, okay? So if I have a particular liability it would not attach to our joint ownership of the coins, unless the two of us agreed that I'm gonna take a share of those coins or all of them if I'm going to take a share and become the exclusive rights holder, let's say, of those coins between my brother and myself, if he's going to agree with me that I get to have, let's say, half, okay, the moment I dispose of those or my interest in the coins for the taxable currency, the liquidatable currency, let's call it, I'm fair game for a creditor. Now, the creditor still has to get permission from the court and all this jazz. So you get, you get how this works. Did I say I'm using an LLC? Did I say that I'm specifically having a written partnership agreement or a charter or joint stock company? No. All I described to you was that our interests are joint. They're joint. I didn't say joint in several. I said they're joint interests. So by doing that, I've severed my liability to the coins by conveying the possession of the coins into the group of my brother and myself. And for those of you who like PMAs and that idea, my brother and myself are a PMA. I don't have to say that, we actually are because it's a real special group, okay? Interesting how that works, right? The same with your family, the same with your siblings, the same with your grandparents and your children and all these sorts of things, okay? There's many, many versions of PMAs. We don't have to talk about PMAs and we don't need an instrument, a legal document in writing to make a PMA. My brother and I are a PMA. It just so happens that we're owning property jointly and therefore neither of our liabilities can attach to the property rights. Did I need to talk about the laws in a particular country? No, why? Because we established the law of the property, which is more important. What was the law of the property? It's owned jointly, <laughs> right? You see how powerful that is? Why do I get to do that? Because I had a property right, a private intangible property right to decide to acquire that particular crypto coin. I did it. I exercised another right to do it, right? And then I exercised a right to decide the manner in which I'm going to hold possession or rights over the use of that property. I decided to share that with my brother. So I exercise private property rights over the property. That makes it private. That makes it not subject to taxation because taxation does not apply to private property. It applies to personal property, real property, commercial property where the state has a compelling interest, okay? Government property, things of that nature. When I say property, I don't just mean real estate. I'm talking about tangible and intangible property. I'm talking about intellectual property rights. I'm talking about patents. I'm talking about the right to decide what I'm gonna to wear today. That's private property. So, see how it's not taxable, right? So if my brother and I own these coins and then we sell them together, for dollars, let's say we're in the States, or maybe I'm in Ireland, maybe we're both in Ireland. Keep in mind, the tax liability does not 
is not established by your citizenship or your residency. You're, you're confusing things here. Tax liability establishes, is established by what constitutes a gain or reportable gain of taxable property. Some things are not. I can keep things not taxable. If my brother and I sell the coins in our joint venture, let's say, and I don't care if it's in a bank account or a shoebox, whatever we medium we use to manage the property, if we jointly sell the property, let's say out of that $100,000 worth of Bitcoin, let's say we sold half of it, right? For the local currency, whatever country we're in, who cares? So now we have $50,000 in uh, the local currency and we have $50,000 with the Bitcoin we still own them jointly. We converted some of the coins into taxable dollars. However, I might have a tax liability in that jurisdiction. He might have a tax liability in that jurisdiction. But together, we do not have a tax liability. Why? Well, we don't exist, according to the government. There's no duty to reconcile. We didn't file a tax return. We don't have to. We're not required to. Ooh. Don't be scared. It's a, a way to manage property to avoid the tax. This answers his question here. He's asking, my understanding is that once the properties in the crypto sphere not converted to fiat, how, how does it remain not taxable? I'm going to repeat this again. Whatever I do to the property in that situation where it's jointly owned by two people that don't jointly have a tax liability to the government or anyone, or a joint obligation to anybody. Like if we didn't sign a commercial lease agreement together or a mortgage together, right? Or file a tax return jointly. If we didn't do that, we're not liable to anybody. So we are a person, a PMA, a person, a group, we are a group that has property rights, that exercise the property rights that are not subject to taxation. So we acquired cryptographic currency, it's property. We disposed of some of it to most mere mortals that would be taxable. But because we're jointly owning it and together, we still jointly own it, even though it's now in the local currency, there's no tax liability. It, by all definitions, there's no gain to either of us. Now, if he says, John, why don't you take out of the 50,000 local currency we just got, $50,000, why don't you take 20 and go buy yourself a car? Okay, so now that $20,000 leaves the joint venture partnership that was isolated in this little non-taxable bubble, okay? And so that $20,000 becomes taxable under any set of laws. All governments are going to operate that way, and I need to report it. If I don't, there is a chance I can get away with not paying the tax on it. I'm not suggesting that you do that. Just realize when you have the liability and how it can be avoided. What if he and I wanted to liquidate our coins, like half of them, and buy a car and not have the tax liability? Well, here's what we would do. Just like we converted the coins to dollars and didn't incur a tax liability, now we're going to convert the dollars to $50,000 into a fairly new car, right? Let's buy a nice car for $50,000 and put it in our names collectively. Not his, not mine, it's ours. <clears throat> That's not taxable. We just bought a car. That's not a gain because the both of us don't have a tax liability. If I bought a car for myself with that money, okay, now the government can make the argument that, yeah, that's a personal gain because you bought something that's a personal expense. But my brother and I together aren't a taxpayer. We could be. We don't have to be. So do you see how this works? We can convert it. Now, here's another another way to do it. I can, can I can take the $50,000 and I can buy the car. He and I can buy the car. Or let's say I buy the car. Remember I just said that would become a taxable event, right? Or if he bought the car himself personally, that's taxable, right? But what if either one of us bought the car in our names and we named ourselves together as the lender on the car? So the $50,000 that came out of our joint venture acquired the vehicle in one of our names. So it was a personal gain for one of us, but the money was borrowed from the joint venture. That would not be taxable. That's an arm's length transaction. That's a loan, right? You see how this works?
do I care what the statutes are? No, because I am using the property in a way that creates its own law, its own terms of use. It's private. My brother and I decide what happens. Okay, I hope that helps answer. And we get into this issue and you're, you're going to see some of these questions. Forget the fact that you have private property. I'll show you. So <clears throat> he's, he says, is there a way I can own crypto and not eventually be asked by the powers that be? You see how we, we see government as this ubiquitous thing that you can't put a finger on and then it's supposed to be this all powerful Wizard of Oz, right? It ain't that. It's not that. It's very specific, okay? All governments operate under written laws. I know sometimes they break the laws, but <clears throat> they're accountable. They're, they're creatures without a conscience, okay? They're under the a particular statute and so forth. They're not powers that be. There is no such thing. This ain't the Wizard of Oz. So understand that you're the slave master unless you act like you're not, okay? Government is to serve people. Let's act like that. So there is no powers that be. Someone, he's asking, he's asking, if someone were to ask me or put it forward for tax, that is the way it goes, wait, by the, to declare it, or, so he's asking, what happens if the government asks me to declare it? To declare what? That I have cryptos? That I have a property interest in cryptos? Declare it? What? Declare it? What does that mean? Declare it. Look. Guys, if they can't see it, they can't tax it. But at the same time, this is not a taxable situation if you've been following me in this video. Declare what? You know, I've got several examples where I'm 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 make I'm telling you the story off of this sentence here. What happens if they ask me to declare? They, the government, the taxing authority. They ask me to declare. Okay, first of all, how will they know you have the cryptos? What'd you do? What, someone maybe reported on you? Okay, so someone reported that you purchased cryptos with dollars or other cryptos. Okay, fine. So what's the drama? Nothing to talk about there. It's private property, even though you know about it. But the fact that you don't know about it and you want me to declare, talk about it, disclose it, is the very definition of something that is not subject to declaration or disclosure. If you're asking me to describe and tell you what I have, then that's the definition of, I don't have to. Because it's not within the purview of the state. It's not within the purview of the statute. Okay, so my story I was going to tell you, I got a series of cases or examples, so letter writing, it's not even a case, letter writing where they're, um, <clears throat> the local business regulates, the business licensing office wants to collect a tax on the chattels, okay, let's say the office furniture of a local business. And so it sends a, a blank tax return with instructions saying, fill this out and send us back a list of all the furniture and things you have in your office so we can assess a tax on it. So I have my clients do the following. We write a letter back and say, okay, I can fill out this tax return, but I need you to provide me with a list of all the property, the chattels that you want to tax. And so this is the end of the conversation, I will tell you. But here's what they would do if they really wanted to respond. They don't respond. And that's the end of the conversation. But if they wanted to respond, they could write back and say, oh, we don't have the list of property that we want to tax. We need you to give us the list. And so I'd write back and say, since when is private property taxable? We didn't ask you to do that. Your funding is for the specific purpose of taxing personal property and property used in business, property that you're aware of. If you're not aware of my property and I have to tell you what it is, that's the definition of it's not being taxable, <laughs> okay? You see how this works? So to answer this question, is there a setup or document that I can put in place? <laughs> Where, what document? It's what you do. It's what you do that's creating the liability. Your lack of understanding is creating the liability. Let me try to stay on point with this question. More questions. If I did own crypto and did want to convert to fiat, is there any setup to put in place to avoid taxes or is this something you just accept? <laughs> you can do that. 
but like I just described, if you change the property ownership rights or the rights to dispose of the property or the rights to manage the gains of the property, if you do that, you share that, that right that you have exclusively, because if you have it exclusively, chances are it's taxable. But if you share that right in a group, this is why we have corporations, y'all. It's happening right in front of us and we're just not, we're not getting it. I'm trying to tell you the essence of how to avoid the tax legally. Own it and use it in a group. What's Who has to be in the group? It has to be two or more people that don't have a joint tax liability, mostly, or that don't have a joint liability of a certain kind. It cannot be husband and wife because hus the definition of husband and wife is they're not adverse parties. It has to be two people that are not married. Okay? That's the answer to the question. Now, there's a myriad ways of doing it. I can use a corporation. I can use a tax deferred entity. How is it an entity tax deferred? Well, it's an entity that's recognized by the government because I probably recorded it, registered it with the state, right? Or I announced it, among other things. And the contract of the entity divests anyone of exclusive rights over the property. And it also manages the property and the disposition of the property in a way that if there is a profit or gain, it is not incurred by someone having an individual tax liability or the corporation itself having an individual tax liability. So the property rights are shared and therefore the taxable gain is shared. And unless the people sharing the taxable gain have a joint tax liability. There is no tax liability in that case. So let me go back to this. If I own crypto personally, is there ways I can protect myself so that I don't have to pay any taxes? Yes, that's what I just described, okay? So I just wanted to restate the question. Make it to where the gains are received by a group that doesn't have a collective tax liability. My brother and myself, just remember, don't ever file a joint tax return. Don't sign a joint lease agreement. Don't, you know, do things jointly. All right. Now, another way to express like my brother and myself would be through a limited liability company. <clears throat> we could also be the trustors of a trust. You know, one of us can be the trustee and one another could be a beneficiary. We could do stuff like that. I mean, there's all kinds of ways of, you know, divesting your exclusive rights over the property. <clears throat> all right. At the moment, my understanding is that once it's in the ta in the crypto sphere and not converted to fiat, then it can remain non-taxable. That's correct. As long so, if you if you take dollars, and most of the time, if we take dollars and buy something like crypto or gold, it's it's probably after tax money anyways. And if it's not, eh, just say it is, or don't talk about it, right? So you acquire the thing, and then you can move the thing around. You can convert it to different uh, things of value. You can convert it to flour, convert it to commodities, convert it to uh, dollars. Can, you can use you can convert this property, cryptos to dollars, cryptos to gold, the dollars to gold, whatever. You can convert it in a in an entity or a group that doesn't have an established or settled tax liability, for one example. <clears throat> so the example of my brother and myself receiving money for something, why would it not be taxable? Because let's just say, it's not because of the reasons I described, but let's just say for accounting terms, it's unsettled funds. It's unsettled. We haven't decided what to do with it yet. If we filed a joint tax return and claimed to some sort of like a partnership or something that received it, okay, it's settled funds and uh, we got to pay. But until then, it's just floating around. Okay. Think of it like uh, being an escrow. All right. <clears throat> Here we go. Are there any documents or setups I can understand to get ahead of things and set up any structures that could protect me in the future? For example, private members clubs. Okay, what I just read to you, this question, that was his question, I just answered in the last few minutes at least. But this whole video answers that question. Notice how I didn't say you need documents. You need a relationship. You need the right of possession. A document helps. Corporations are great for that, LLCs, trust organizations, but keep this in mind. You don't want to be in a situation where you're going to have to prove property rights with producing a trust document or an operating agreement. Okay, the property rights should be established by your possession, your the exercise of the possession that you have over it, 
or simply the articles of the LLC or the corporation you're, you filed, you recorded, you published. The articles should be enough. Never, you should never be having to defend your property rights or argue about them by disclosing an operating agreement or a trust document. Just keep that in mind. You have to prove yourself, okay? So hopefully that answers. So yeah, that would be the, the documents, right? The way you're using it or the way you're using the entity that holds the property rights. Okay. I have heard that private members club is not something that can be utilized here like the USA. So he's talking about in Ireland, okay? But I don't know. Anything I can do in Ireland. All right. So he says, I have heard. What, were you sitting at a restaurant and eavesdropping on somebody's conversation? What is this I have heard? Were you watching Yahoo groups? <laughs> I mean, think about this for a second. Think, think about this. Private members club. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to describe one for you. My brother and myself. Well, that's the example I used to this whole video. It's a private members club. How about my wife and I? That is, but it's still viewed as one person. So... We're not going to get the separation, okay? But my brother and I, totally. My partner and I, totally. Business partner, right? All right. Whoever told you that you can't do the same thing in Ireland that you can do in the USA with a private club doesn't have a clue what he's talking about. Doesn't have a clue. you got to think for yourself. I want you to think for yourself. Don't just say this guy in Florida, John Jay, told me I could do this thing. What do you think? That's what people do. They say, hey, John, have you ever heard of this guy that does this thing? What do you think about what he thinks? And I don't. And I don't care. I don't want you to compare what I say with what other people's opinions are. I care less about their opinions. I know with what works. And because I understand the law of property, that I have property rights. And it's recognized in law. <laughs> okay, there's statutes too. If I step into the purview of the statute, I'm fair game. I'm not going to do that all the time. Sometimes I do. But I'm showing you how not to do that. All right. Is it any good setting up a standalone LLC, buying crypto through it, and then do I buy it personally without an LLC? Does it really matter if I'm keeping crypto? Okay. So I can put money to an LLC and I can buy crypto in the name of the LLC. I can buy crypto in my name, and I can put it in the possession of, with a contract, an LLC, if we're going to talk about LLCs. What? Is that a gift? <laughs> Is that a sale? No, it works like this. Let's just say hypothetically that I, John Jay, bought Bitcoin, and I wanted to manage it in the name of a company. I had it in my name for a while. Maybe it was through an exchange, who knows? And I conveyed it over by moving it from one wallet to another. So I still have the credentials to both wallets. So my personal wallet, I have the credentials to. Nobody else does. My LLC wallet, I have the credentials to. Nobody else does. So I'm mutually liable, right? But however, I'm titling the property ownership in an LLC now. So it's a different tax treatment if I want it. So I take my personal holdings and I move them over to the LLC holdings and I'm getting one change. I'm simply changing the title of the ownership before it was me. Now it's the name of the LLC, but I'm owning the LLC still 100%. Ooh, is that scary to some of you? Well, I've, I'm halfway there, right? I've changed the title of it. So that way, if I dispose of the property for dollars that are taxable, it's not me who's doing it. It's the LLC, which has the tax liability, not me. Now I can claim that as my gains and nobody will argue with me. Or I can choose not to claim it and nobody will argue with it. It's not illegal either way. Do y'all want some sort of legal reference? How about this? And I'll show you something if I can find it real quick. If I convey my property interests, my property rights or my property to an entity in which I own and I retain 100% ownership, I've simply conveyed the, the, the property rights and retained the beneficial interests, the same as they were before. I just retitled them, okay? Why did I do that? Well, let's just say I did it for estate planning purposes. Nothing unusual there. I did it for estate planning purposes. And I did it where I retained the beneficial interests. 
those didn't change. So I didn't create a tax liability and it's not a gift. There's no other party involved. It's just me, me, myself, and I. Can I do that in any country? You bet. Do I care what the laws are? We don't really care. Okay. If you're trying to do what I'm describing here in this video, if you're trying to work with like um, a pension fund, like an IRA or something like that, a retirement account that has a government exemption of some kind, tax exemption, doesn't work. You can't do that. That's a separate type of creature. Okay. It's a government trust fund. So none of that, what I'm saying here applies in that situation. This has to be, let's call it after tax dollars, right? So, all right, so is it any good to set up a standalone? Okay, so yeah, so basically that's what I'm telling you is you can convey the property or acquire the property in the name of the LLC or back and forth. Just, it's your beneficial interest that, that matters, right? How do I know if I retain the beneficial interest? Well, I know that because I still care in the same way about the property as I did before. If I still care about it, in the same way, then I retain the beneficial interest. That's the test. If you need to, you know, figure that out yourself in different situations, just use that as an example, okay? All right. Now let's say he goes on and he talks about from a business perspective, I have questions. First know we have a trading company. Okay, now here's what this guy did. Trading company that's owned by a holding company that is owned by two individual LLCs. So you have a company owned by a company and two LLCs. How much you want to bet the same, let's say, two people owning everything? That's just ridiculous. You're not getting any benefit there. It's a complex structure that's completely unnecessary. It just demonstrates the, the ineffectiveness, okay? <clears throat> what are you trying to do? Did you first identify the risk? Let's describe it. What's your risk? What, do you try, what risk are you trying to avoid or manage? If you can't put that in words, then you shouldn't be doing all this stuff. All right. So regarding his business LLC, I set up a bank account and an account on the trading platform in the LLC name. And he bought crypto through the LLC. So he's telling me, right? The crypto is now sitting in a private wallet. Okay. No third party there, right? No exchange apparently. And he intends to use it as a, a long-term investment. Okay. So he, he says not trading it, but leaving it there. Okay. So... First of all, <clears throat> buying something and holding it is not investment. It's a speculation. Understand that. And speculating can be very expensive. There's huge risk with speculating. You're better off playing blackjack at the local casino and just learning basic strategy, okay? You'll have more fun with your money as you lose it. You won't lose it as fast if you learn basic strategy. It'll be way more fun than buying something and just holding it. You're not investing anything. You're just afraid. <laughs> make your money work for you, okay? The younger you are, the more work you should make it do, the more risk you should take, okay? The more risk there is to take, the more money is to make. I'm not trying to be a poet, but it just happens to rhyme, okay? The more risk you can take, the more money you can make. The younger you are, the better it is. The older you are, I would think, the lower risk you want to take. Anyways, that's what he's doing. So his first risk is loss of opportunity. He, he's risking he's losing the opportunity of using the money because he's afraid to lose it because he's just parking it somewhere and hoping that it gains value against the currency while the currency is losing value. What good is that? <laughs> All right. Is there anything to note about this? Yeah, what I just said. Or anything I can do to bolster this setup. Yeah, stop using it. Understand the very basic of what you're trying to do. You want to manage risk. First, identify the risk. Tax gain, uh, taxable gain. What do we, how do we avoid it? Okay, we can just not do the transaction. Well, that's stupid. <laughs> we have to live our lives, right? Money has to work for us. So we're going to do the transaction. Let's do it in a way that doesn't create a taxable gain. Go back and watch the video from the beginning. That's the fundamental concept. You decide the style in which you want to do it in. It's going to be maybe an entity, a partnership, an arrangement, something. You're going to satisfy those basic principles and legally avoid the tax by deferment. Let's just call it by deferment. And the accounting term would be I'm using unsettled funds. And I, I did it that way deliberately. Nothing wrong with that. Okay. All right. So if I want to take some fiat, 
as per Irish law, I'd have to pay 33% tax, right? And if you do that, it's just plain stupid. There is no reason to pay tax on cryptos for your entire life, okay? That's true for any property. You can almost always, almost always avoid the tax and still benefit from the gains legally. So I hope that answers that question. Do you know that if I, for example, move to Dubai, now he's talking about residency or citizenship in the future for a certain period, could I take that and cash it in from there and not be held liable for any tax in Ireland? Now there's a couple things going on there. One is, does, Ir does Ireland tax Irish citizens anywhere in the world like the US does? Is there a tax treaty between Ireland and Dubai that would report on you? Are you dealing with a reporting entity, an institution, a bank or something? You know, there's all these things that are going on over there. So I guess what he's asking me is, if I go to a different country, can I hide it? <laughs> well, look, take your best shot. I always recommend not hiding it. Always tell the truth, but do the right thing. And there is always a way to avoid the tax. Unless I'm going to do something like set up an oil drilling rig or manufacture weapons and explosives, or alcohol and spirits, okay, those I deliberately incur a tax liability for. So he says, how's it going to work? If I have this in a private wallet and never declare it, well, that's the definition of private, right? It's not declared. Why? Because I didn't do it. Because I didn't have to. If it's private, if somebody's telling me I have to declare it for tax purposes, that's the definition of I don't have to declare it because you don't know about it. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> How's this all going to be extracted for me or us if it is in a non-centralized private or cold wallet? I just told you. I just described. Everything I just said was on the presumption, the assumption that the government's watching everything. How about that? I mean, if you want privacy and you want to get on the dark web in Monero, please do. That's even better. Then you can do stuff that would normally be considered illegal. But if you're in the private realm, it, the government has no duty to act. You see, there's two things going on there. If you're doing something outside the purview of the government, you're not hurting anybody, right? The government, you're divest the government of the authority to act and the duty to act. If you're meeting those criteria, well, then do whatever you want, right? Sit in your living room and get drunk on Saturday night. And don't go anywhere. Don't drive your car. And don't beat your children. No one's, there's no problem there. You can hurt yourself. <laughs> okay? This is what we're talking about. I know it's a screaming stupid example, but all right. I've been advised. Here we go. I have been advised. Who's telling you stuff? Think for yourself that buying property or land through the same business LLC is not ideal. What does that mean, not ideal? How do you want to own the property and why? If you're buying property of any kind, let's call it real estate, maybe some of real estate here. First of all, why are you doing it? And second of all, how do you want to manage the risk aspects of that property? How do you want to manage the gains or the benefits of the property? How do you want to do that? There's all kinds of ways of doing it. You decide, but you're telling me I have been advised. Okay, so that's the passive voice. I, I asked somebody what to do or what? I read an article on Yahoo groups. Uh, yeah. What does that even mean? It's not ideal. It doesn't mean anything. What is your view on this? I just told you. What you just said is meaningless. Stop listening to articles on the internet. Think for yourself. You're not even talking about Irish law. You're talking about, I have been advised and someone said it's not ideal. And then you said, based on Irish law. What Irish law? Is it possible in the eyes of the law? What law? I just described the law for you. Look, remember, I just described the law of the property, the property law regarding your holding cryptographic currency. I just described it. You are the law when it comes to that. There is no statute. You can bring it within the purview of the statute. You have to go out of your way to do that. You are the law of the property. Stop acting like it's out of your control. It ain't the weather. It's your will. It's your will. You decide what the property rights are. You are the law. You make the law the property. Is it possible in the eyes of the law to set up a self-administered pension 
and invest in crypto through this. Okay, so a self-administered pension. So a lot of times, like um, in our country, in the United States, they're talking about a self-directed in individual retirement account. So I'm imagining you're talking about a self-administered pension, which is a government trust fund. Here, a self-directed IRA is a government trust fund, which means the government is going to give you the benefit of tax deferment under its own terms, and you have to follow those terms. And no, I don't see a benefit to it. So if you can get tax deferment and tax benefits by understanding property rights, why wouldn't you just set up your own fund? Why do you need the government pension fund for that? You don't need government exemptions when you can already arrange your property rights and legally avoid the tax. What do you need a self-directed IRA for? No, there's no benefit I don't see. Do you know anyone in Ireland or, or any advice on this? It's what I just said. Do your own thing. Set up your own collection of assets. Why do you need a pension fund? Just to get tax exemption? Why? You get permission not to pay taxes, and then you meet certain criteria that tie up your money so that you can't use it in the way you want. So you're being taxed on the loss of opportunity. You're getting taxed anyways. I would just rewind this by one minute and just listen to what I just said. Again, a pension fund that's going to give you a tax exemption is going to penalize you by the loss of opportunity that you could have if your money wasn't restrained. Now, sometimes it's in a pretty good situation. Like we have, we have some self-directed that you can do some wild things with. Okay, fine. I mean, if you know how to do that, I've seen people make a lot of money. I'm just saying, why do you need permission to not pay a tax when you can actually, you already have it by establishing the law of the property because it's already private and because you can own it in the way you want. You can move it around how you want. Let me just tell you, the rich people of this world, the really rich people, they live off of debt. Why do you think loans are not taxable? Because the rich people write all the laws. Their government doesn't write anything. The rich people that own the government write everything, okay? They make it very easy for themselves to not pay taxes, but you are paying taxes. You have the same system. It's applied equally. You're just not using it. So that's what they do. So anyways... And he says, we have one of the most stringent systems in place for tax compared to USA. So what? What I just told you in this entire video, show me one law, which you haven't cited any law yet in Ireland. You, so you told me most stringent system, but, but that doesn't, that's not even consistent with what you just told me. And I just, I just listed for you and described in great detail how I don't care what your laws are because I can still avoid the tax legally, no matter what your statutes say. So what does it matter if they're the most stringent system? So what? 33%? Let's make it 99%. Who do you think's writing these laws? The rich people that are liquidating you every week. They're liquidating you. Don't get me started on that subject. They're tricking you into tying up your money and not using it, and they're taxing you out of existence. You're letting them. And I'm showing you there's some very easy things you can do because you already have private property rights. Those are not taxable. <clears throat> Anyways, let's see. I hope this, I think this video answers all your questions. So, and thank you for the questions because I think it answers many other people's questions and, and maybe this will work for people in England. I mean, it will work when I'm telling you. The question is, are you going to take the initiative and set up something that you can use and understand these principles? You can test them out. You'll see it works. I've done this probably these strategies in for the last seven years, at least in a list of uh, countries, and, and they're the English speaking mostly, uh, using LLCs and trusts and partnerships. It's easier to use LLCs. Uh, you can use partnerships too. But anyways, who cares? It's a contract, right? The ownership can be shared in a group that's not under the purview of the taxing scheme. That's not illegal. That's the way our system was written. And again, your system, your tax system was not written by the government. It was written by the financial interests that run the earth. Okay. These are the financial interests that control all the um, access to resources and commodities. These creatures are the ones that have their own stock market and are betting against you. When you think you're owning stock on the stock market and investing in stock, 
you're not. You're the chump. Someone else is buying stock and competing against your interests. It's a big game, right? Because we're ignoring, we're forgetting that we have a system of commerce because we exercised private property rights and we have been doing so for, for centuries. And now all of a sudden we don't talk about them and we talk about what the government wants to hand us. <laughs> how do you think the government was created? I mean, how, how is the judicial power conferred on government officials? If not by people who had what? The judicial power. Did they give up the judicial power? No, they still have it. Where did they get that from? Because it's their right over their dominion over resources and land. It's a property right. And they conferred or conveyed some of that to government officials. All right. We forget all this. So go back and look. There's there's a state compelling interest in collecting taxes. There is a state compelling interest in collecting taxes. No problem. I don't have a problem with that. We pay the taxes. Uh, we pay the taxes just by using the currency. <laughs> You're being taxed just by using the currency. All right. There's no reason to pay more taxes. All right. So anyways, I hope that helps you with the understanding. And uh, thanks again for the questions. And maybe we can, if you want to, when you see this video, maybe make some comments. I can uh, expound on this on other videos. Hope to see you guys on Thursday.